Good evening to parishioners and friends of St. Francis Xavier Parish. My name is Paul and I welcome you to our Eucharistic celebration of the second Sunday of Lent. The Gospel prevents us with the transfiguration of Jesus Christ while he was in prayer with three of his disciples on a mountain. This Sunday, as a parish, we are focusing on reconciliation. We recall that Christ died and rose from the dead in order that we may reconcile us to the Father. To enable you to live out reconciliation brought to us by Jesus, you are invited to adopt the prayer of peace of St Francis of Assisi. May what you do or not do, say or not say, be driven by this prayer. In this Mass, we pray for the intentions of all parishioners and friends of our parish. Would you please stand and join in the peace prayer of St Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Mass, we pray for the total healing body, soul, and spirit of Margaret Belly, Kim Lord, Michelle Liju, Joshua Liju, Noella and Jim Shan, James. The Almighty God grant them healing body, soul, and spirit, and strength and grace. And for the personal intentions and family intentions of Christ and Okoye, Obina Okoye for total transformation, Conception and Cheta, Ramona Weman, Jenny Caspers, Miriam Rejandran, Jess and family, 
Liju and family. Pam, Janet Lewis, Sue Hunt, Sharon Da Silva, Paula Da Gama Pinto, Maria the Divine Mercy, and John and Matilda. And for our own different intentions, God Almighty God grant us all whatever we ask in faith this second Sunday of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge your sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. But Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ's Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your family and your father's house for the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name so famous that it will be used as a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who slight you. All the tribes of the earth shall bless themselves by you. So Abram went as the Lord told him. The word of the Lord.
cast me not away from thy presence, O oh Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. With me, bear the hardships for the sake of the good news, relying on the power of God who has saved us and called us to be holy, not because of anything we ourselves have done, but for his own purpose and by his own grace. This grace has already been granted to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has only been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus. He abolished death and he has proclaimed life and immortality through the good news. The word of the Lord. Stand to welcome the good news. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Hear him. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone. There in their presence he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared to him, to them. They were talking with him. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow. And from the cloud there came a voice which said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favor. Listen to him. When they heard this, the disciples fell on their faces, overcome with fear. When Jesus came up, but Jesus came up and touched them. Stand up, he said. Do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus gave them this order. Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory. 
The Lord is good all the time. Do not be afraid. Today, the Lord calls us not to be afraid. For through the power of his transfiguration, he has given us the grace and the glimpse of the glory of eternal life. That's why today, the second Sunday of Lent, the church calls us, reminds us that the common theme of today's readings is metamorphosis or transformation in our lives as Christians. The readings invite us to walk with the Holy Spirit to transform our lives by renewing them during Lent and to radiate the grace of the transfigured Lord to all around us by our spirit-filled lives. God has transformed us through our baptism, confirmation, receiving the Holy Eucharist through substantiation, Jesus, the bread and wine turned to the body and blood of Jesus, and that transformed us to be, instead of human, to be divine. And through the anointing of the holy oil of the sick, he brings back the holiness in our lives and ready for eternal salvation, our sins forgiven through reconciliation. God has given us the avenues of eternal salvation. That's why today the readings invite us to walk with the Holy Spirit. To live our lives as the children of God. To transform our lives and show the world that God is by what we do and say. The transfiguration of Jesus Christ on the mountain reminds us that the way of the cross leads to the resurrection and the eternal life. And that the purpose of Lent is to help us better to enter into those mysteries of our redemption. For through the transfiguration in the gospel reading today, Christ reveals to us the glory that will be ours if we remain faithful to him. Through this reading, God encourages us to be strong and courageous in our journey this season of Lent with a total obedience to his will. As Abraham obeyed God, leave this land and go to the land I will show you. Obedience to the will of God to a special mission. And I will bless you. And your descendants will be blessed. This blessing comes through obedience to the will of God. That's why Abraham listened to God. And we are to listen in faith to Jesus and journey with him through the hardships of life and with God's word to us. And the second reading of today tells us about St. Paul writing to Timothy, narrating about how strong faith means a total love and trust in God's saving power, especially in times of suffering. Suffering brings holiness through the power of prayer, through the power of purgation, purifying ourselves, penance, and through the power of charity, and through the power of trusting in God. The grace of God leads us. That's why it is not easy for at times it demands that one must leave behind something very important. It may demand one to do something extraordinary to respond to God's will and the God's call and mission. You must leave your comfort zone. That's why if you want to receive Abraham's blessings, we leave our comfort zones, live our comfortable life, live lives of penance, 
lives of charity and lives of prayer. And then the grace of God will see us through and lead us in our journey of life. That's why the glory of God revealed today in us in the gospel reading the transfiguration of Jesus should serve as the activation of energy that motivates us to continue working towards our final destination. The journey is not yet over and truly not an easy one. However, Christ is with us. We are not missing the road. We are following him. So he encourages us and tells us today, do not be afraid. I have transfigured and I will transfigure your lives. He tells us today to always push. Push, pray until something happens. That through the power of prayer that our lives will change. Finally, the transfiguration is a message of hope and encouragement. For in moments of doubt, pain and suffering, disappointment and despair, we need a mountain top experiences to reach out to God and listen to his consoling words. This is my beloved son and daughter in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Can people around you listen to you as the beloved daughter, beloved son of God? Can they emulate you as a transparent Christian, a like Christian of faith, showing, radiating, transformed lives, transfigured lives, radiating the grace of God? That's why as we are in the Lenten season, Lent will lead us to the Easter joy. Ask our good Lord to give us the grace, the strength, and the courage to defend our faith, defend our life, live our lives of transfiguration, and show the world we are with Christ and Christ is with us. We are not, that we are not afraid to defend what we believe and our convictions. Let us stand to proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all the Son of the invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. But the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of intercession. Brothers and sisters, from the temptations in the wilderness to glory on the mountain top, Jesus is always the one we listen to. For Pope Francis, guiding the church as we all walk together, that no one may be excluded or feel abandoned, but all find you unity in Jesus Christ. As we pray for those who bear great hardships for the sake of Jesus and his gospel around the world, that they will always trust in the saving power of God and receive salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For everyone baptised into Jesus, that their faith may grow during this Lent as they listen to him, the beloved Son of the Father. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who, as a result of war, persecution, poverty and hunger, have left the land of their birth, that they may find a promised land of peace, safety and blessing, as did Abraham and Sarah, a long time ago. Lord, hear us. hear us. May our sick, Sam Atkinson, Fred Lim, Riley Kemp, James Atchison, and Margaret know in their suffering the comfort of your healing grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have recently fallen asleep, in the Lord. Steve Rando, Botrus Fermanian, the suffering souls in purgatory, and those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. Lottie Klein, Colleen Fermanian, may they rest in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pause and pray with our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us surrender our own personal prayers and petitions to our loving God and all those who ask us to pray for them and all those we are praying for in this Mass. Almighty God, grant them their heart's desire, the sick healing, the dead eternal rest, and the families we are praying for, transformation, God's grace and blessings of our needs and the needs of all those who are praying for, surrender everything unto the Lord through our blessed Mother Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for all sinners, now the day of our death. Amen. Lord, be with all who are in need that justice may relieve suffering, sufficient for the day relieve famine, and grace save all who will die today, and grant us all whatever we ask in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become a spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with sacrifice, we offer you with humble, contrite hearts. Lord my God, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that their passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts who are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when someone was undead, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you wait to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of his son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. St. Joseph, her glorious spouse, with their blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Francis Xavier, and with all the saints of whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. By this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Peter, our Archbishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people we have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who are summoned before you, Lord. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, especially John Caspers and all the holy souls in purgatory. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we are waiting joyful hope for the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, (laughs) 
Behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. But the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ lead us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O God, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Second collection, please. Second collection, please. The commissioning of the parish council. The pastoral parish council provides valuable assistance and support to the priests. Through the parish pastoral council, the Christian faithful, along with those who share in the pastoral care of the parish, in virtue of their office, give their help in fostering pastoral activities. I now invite the members of the St. Francis Xavier's Parish Pastoral Council to please come forward. Okay. Are you resolved? Are you willing to accept the responsibility of being a parish pastoral council, counselor for the next 12 months? Did you hear her? No, no, did he hear you? I am. <laughs> Will you strive to be sensitive to the vision and ideas of others so that you may truly be representative of the parish community? Thank you. Will you speak boldly so that the voice of the people may be heard in the church? I will. Will you lead St. Francis Xavier's Catholic community by word and example in the Christian way? I will, with the help of God. May God, who has given you this call through this community, Bring that call to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please let us stand. Wait, not yet. We stand, please. We pray together. Heavenly Father, you have chosen us to be your people and have gathered us to live and work in St. Francis Xavier Parish. Be pleased with all our efforts to love you and serve you in word, worship, and work. Give your blessing to these people whom we now appoint. Let them be pleasing to you. Guide their activities by the light of your spirit and help them to walk to your honor and glory for the benefit of all your people. May the open to your word May they lead us faithfully and well in service to the world. We are this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And God bless you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord. 
with a blessing that endures forever and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten son so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of the apostles. Grant them healing and strength and grace and blessings and your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Go in the peace of Christ for this Mass is ended. Thank you for coming and I wish you a very good and wonderful weekend. And God bless you.